Hello, my sisters. Welcome, Matrix, to your show, 6 O'Clock Physical Sciences on a Tuesday. I am Looney Tracy. And today she really is Looney. <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I just have to smile and nod. You know, by the, by the time you guys get her, I think she's... At 6, yeah, something happens in yeah. the time. Yeah, I know. What are we doing for the Matrix today? Well, actually <laughs> talking about what we're doing for the Matrix today, because Lenny's having a problem with the mic telling me it's shocking her, which it shouldn't be, but let's not go there. <laughs> we're actually doing circuits, which is my favorite section, grade 12s. I get very excited about it. We're going to do it for the next couple of weeks, but today we're going to do a little bit of grade 11 revision, and I get very excited. I love, I love the section of work. Okay. I do. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, my set is to hit us up on Facebook. All you need to do is go to facebook.com forward slash Lynn Extra. Our Twitter handle is at Lynn Extra. And then if you want all the show notes, the videos, and the schedules, all you need to do is go to learnmindset.co.za. And it's quite a user friendly website, guys. So you click on anything you want there and you'll get it. And remember, if you want to win yourself this awesome Casio calculator, all you need to do is complete the test yourself questions. From our notes, the link is on our Facebook page, so all the information is there. Fill in everything, all your details, submit your entry, and you have until Tuesday at 8 in the morning. So not this Tuesday, next week Tuesday. So we've got all the time in the world to enter the Casio competition and stand a chance to win. And remember, guys, please stay tuned. I've got so much more stuff to tell you, but during the show, because I don't want to waste Tracy's time. Look, she's nodding, and she's happy, and she's excited about electric circuits. Okay, Tracy. Okay, the fact that your mic's also <laughs> can me, but let's not go there. We won't go into electrical safety, because that's just scary. All right, so, guys, we're going to do circuits. Now, a lot of this is grade 11, okay? So a lot of this stuff is what you did in grade 11, so you need to go back and revise. And in fact, some of you might need to go back to grade 10 notes as well because we're going to add to this, okay? So we're just looking at the basics today. So first of all, what we're going to do, revise grade 10 and 11 circuits, and then we're going to work through a couple of simpler circuits, and we'll go from there. But first, I have to give you the <coughs> challenge question. Okay, so wrong way. All right, wrong way again. Can I just say, mm -hmm. I'm not the only person on TV that issues, has issues with the smart board. No, you're not. If you were watching any of the World <laughs> Cup soccer, I felt much better when I wasn't the only one. I'm you just know, saying. It's fine. No, you're it, not. It made me feel okay. <laughs> there we go. All right. So here's our challenge question. So the ammeter in the circuit below shows the same reading regardless of whether switches S1 and S2 are either both open or closed. The internal resistance of the cell as well as the resistance of the ammeter and the connecting wires are negligible. I hate that word. That means they can be ignored. Okay, so there's no internal resistance. We don't need to worry about the cells and the resistors and all the rest of it. Okay, the question is calculate the reading on the ammeter. Okay, calculate the reading on the ammeter. So that is a little bit of a okay, this could be interesting. So whether S1 and S2 are both closed, or whether they are both open, we get the same reading, and I want to know what the reading on that ammeter is. Okay, so that's a challenge question. Sorry, I'm very excited about this challenge <laughs> question. Moving on. Okay, hopefully you've got it. It is, they are posted, hey? The, yes. notes, are, the notes are there. You might need to get there because circuits are best done with diagrams. Okay, so. Let's just go through the basics. In grade 10, you would have started with this, and that's Ohm's law. And the current flowing through a resistor is directly proportional to the potential difference across the resistor, provided the temperature remains constant or stays constant. Temperature is a very important part of resistance. Remember that if the, re the temperature of a resistor increases, then the resistance normally increases. That's what we call an ohmic resistor. Okay, A non-ohmic resistor, that doesn't always happen. Normal light bulbs, not your, um, not your fluorescent light bulbs, your filament light bulbs, which hopefully you don't have in your house anymore because the, the um, fluorescent ones are our energy saving ones and we want to save energy, okay? Your filament light bulbs are non-ohmic conductors. So they don't obey Ohm's law. They don't follow this. They don't give you a nice graph. <laughs> They're not nice, okay? Now remember, as an equation, Ohm's law gives you the equation R equals V over I. We R is your resistance. V is your potential difference and I is your current. Guys, you are going to use this equation till you are blue in the face in circuits. Okay? You're going to use R equals V over I over and over and over again. You, it's on your information sheet. Hopefully you know it. That's where using subscripts becomes very important because you've got so many I's and B's and I's all over the place. 
that we don't always remember which one we're dealing with. So make sure you use subscripts, okay? Now, potential difference, and here we really are just looking at definitions, is the work that must be done per coulomb of charge to move the charge between two points, so it's joules per coulomb. We're just saying how much energy do we have to give to each charge to get it to move. Current is the rate at which charge moves, okay? It's the rate of, it's the rate of movement of charge. It's Guys, and with charge, please be careful here. This charge is either positive or negative. It doesn't have to just be electrons, okay? Because when we get to electrochemical cells and electrolytic cells, the point is there we have positive and negative ions moving, all right? So it's not just negative charges, it's both, okay? And resistors can be connected in either series or parallel. And right about now, I can hear the groans because now you're going, oh, no, I don't want to do this. But in the notes, and this is actually the easiest way to, rem to remember it. And I've, I've taught it this way for years and years and years, which maybe just makes me old, but uh, hopefully it helps, okay? So in the notes, I've actually got this summary here for you guys as well. It's just to remind you what resistors in series look like and what resistors in parallel look like, okay? Series means that as I go, and this is when I get to play with the highlighters too. Sorry, I shouldn't get this excited, but I do. Oh no, all the nice ones are gone. No, that's, that, mm, that's what I want. Okay, as the current goes from here to here with my little stars, okay, the current just has one way to go. That's what makes it series, okay? Over here, I go through to this point, and now the current has a choice. So if I do this, the current can actually split some more smiley faces. As soon as, I love this part of my job, you see? Don't look me like that. Okay, so we get different colors. As soon as the current can split, then it's in parallel. Easiest way to actually think about it, okay? In series means the current doesn't have a choice. In parallel, the current has a choice, okay? Let's just take those off because we need to actually see what's underneath. Now, in series, when we add the, par the resistors, we add the parallel, we add all the resistors together to get the total. Current is the same everywhere. Remember, current is the flow of charge. We can't lose charge. This is so important. Charge can lose energy, okay, because work gets done, but we can't lose the charge. That's like if you are in a class of 30 people, all right, and for some of you I know that's quite a small class, but you're in a class of 30 people in a classroom. Now, the 30 of you start the day and go to English, then the next day lesson you go to Afrikaans, then you go to science, then you go to maths, okay. Now, between going from Afrikaans to, to English, I think that's where we went, you can't lose a person, okay? And if you do, they bunk in and they get into trouble. So we can't actually lose them, all right? So we have to have the same amount of people. That's like the charge. You have to keep the same amount of charge. You might lose some enthusiasm, okay? And in fact, if you were like me and you went, say, from um, science, which I enjoyed to Afrikaans, Sorry, guys, <laughs> which I didn't, well, even worse was English. <laughs> Let's not even go there. To a language which I really didn't enjoy. I lost a lot of enthusiasm along the way, okay? Excited for science. Mm, not so much for English. It's the same concept, okay? Now, current is the same through all the resistors. We can't lose them, but the voltage doesn't have to be the same when they're in series, okay? The voltage gets divided. And... Each of V1, V2, V3, if I add them together, gives me the total over all three together, okay? V1, V2, and V3 will only be the same if the resistors are the same, okay? If the resistors are different, then the voltage will be different. In parallel, current now splits up, okay? Current has a choice. This is like your choice subjects at school, okay? So you guys have chosen science. You have friends who maybe chose geography, and you have another friend who chose history, neither of which would have been in my choice of subject. Sorry, guys, I just did not do anything with languages and anything that involved joy. Okay, but you've now come from a combined subject together, say like English. Now you have to do your choice subjects. So your class splits up, okay? But you're all equally happy to go to your choice subject. So less of you go, each of these get a certain amount of current, but they all lose the same amount of energy, okay? Another way to think about it is why the voltage has to be the same over each of these, regardless of the current, it's like driving on the highway, okay? Now, for those of you that, that have learned to drive and are driving, 
There's nothing worse. It's one of my pet thieves, okay? You now go onto the on-ramp onto the highway, and the person in front of you is going 40. And the car's coming down the highway, you're going 120, and you're like, this is not good. You want to join the traffic in the highway, you have to be going at the same speed, okay? If all the electrons over here, let's go back to a normal pen, if when the electrons join up over here and they don't all have the same amount of energy, they haven't lost the same amount of energy, you'd have a bit, bit of a train smash, okay? Because remember, they all have to join back together and carry on moving on as one, all on the highway at the same time, okay? So these voltmeters all get, have the same potential difference. The average, the energy lost on the whole is the same for each of the, the electrons. The resistors don't have to be the same. The current will split up. Now, current is a teenager, all right, of which Looney isn't anymore as much as she wants to be. Oh, man. She likes to pretend that she's not. Don't, don't reveal such things. They don't need to know. Only just, okay? But let's be honest. Teenagers are lazy. Shh. I didn't say that. So, because they're lazy, um, current is a teenager. Current is lazy. It will always take the path of least resistance. So, the bigger the resistor, the less current it gets. It's like trying to wade through mud. But if you can go on a tar road, we'll go, most of you will go on a tar road, okay? Path of least resistance. Big resistor, small amount of current, small resistance, big current. So it's easy to get through, okay? However, why would we use resistors in parallel? Because in parallel, the total resistance always gets smaller, okay? Nice way to know if you've worked out parallel resistance correctly is your total must always be smaller than your smallest resistor in the parallel section. So even if I had, say, one ohm over here, and I had 200 ohms for this one, and this one was 500 ohms, my total will be less than one. Okay? No exception to that because of the way we work it out. Okay? Each, if I add A1 to A2 to A3, I'll get the total, but V1, V2, V3 will be the same. Okay, and that was that part for now. And then, of course, electrical energy and power, which you have done. It's a little bit of a reminder for you. Remember, work and power is the same as when we did work and power in your mechanics. Work, though, is VIT, I squared RT, V squared RT. The nice thing about these equations is I can always decide on which one to use depending on which values I have. So go for the simplest, okay? Try not to work something out again. Also, remember that power is actually work divided by time. It's the rate at which work is done. Same as in mechanics, okay? But here, power looks the same as that equation without the T in it, without time, okay? Same unit as in mechanics. It's measured in watts. Work is also measured in joules. That hasn't changed. We're just now using whatever is necessary from the, the what's it, circuit diagram. Okay, so let's jump right into our first question. Okay, so we're going to look a little bit at it and then we'll take a break. Okay, because the thing with circuits grade 12 is this is practice. Okay, I love circuits because I have done so many of them. I can see them in your dreams. I do a little, but let's not go there, okay? Because um, that just is, makes me even more weird. Um, but I love circuits because I think they're easy, all right? Circuits, the more you practice, the more you do, the easier they become, okay? And there's no way around this. So I'm going to show you some shortcuts with all my pens. I love pens on this thing. You have no idea. Anyway, so here we go. So this was from the prelim paper in um, 2008. It says, consider the electric circuit below and answer the questions that follow. Assuming no internal resistance, assuming we can ignore the resistance of, the, of everything else, we're just going to go from here. Now, first thing you should do, now whether you know that conventional current always goes from negative, sorry, positive to negative, or you do it the other way around, it makes absolutely no difference, okay? What you really should do is have a couple of highlighters or more pens, it's up to you. What I am going to do is we've got to make sure you can actually see this. So, I'm going to try another pen and see what happens, okay? Is you take your highlighter and you start from the cells, because that's where it originates, okay? And you can't even see that. So, 
No, you can't see that either. Can you see this one? Mm, no. All right, so we're not going to do that. Let's use highlighters. Okay, so as you can see, part of my circuit's not turning yellow. It was white. This is series. It goes through this resistor. And now I've got to this point over here. We now have a choice. Okay, so now I change my highlighter. I change pins because now, and now we're going to go to green to the top and I'm using a different color at the bottom because they different values. If the two resistors in parallel were the same value, so say they were both 5 or they were both 15, I would use the same color pen. Okay, but they're different values so I know it's going to separate and then I remember that well when they come back together I've still got to have the total. I, it can't have disappeared. Okay? Current can't have disappeared. So whatever current goes through here, it's the same current that's going through here. Okay? And in fact, now the very first question they ask is for you to calculate the magnitude of that current. First thing you need to do when you look at a question like this is look and see what the easiest equation to <coughs> use is. Okay? I know what V total is. Because that's the 60 volts. It has to be, okay? It can't be anything different. So we go, okay, I know that my total voltage is 60 volts. They want the magnitude of the current. So what they're asking you for here, grade 12, is they're saying to you, what is the total current? Okay, they want, yeah, I total. Okay. So now we say to ourselves, well, to get I total, if we, we, this is the easiest equation, that's the most basic. So we go, okay, R equals V over I. I know I'm going to probably have to use V total because I've got it. I want I total, which means I'm probably going to need R total. Okay? I'm going to need total resistance. So now we go, okay, ah, can't just add them all together. Why? Because I have a parallel section. So what I actually need to do is I need to work out what my R parallel is, okay? So this is what we're going to do. I really need you to try this on your own. Thinking about what I told you about how to work out R parallel earlier with the equation, Okay, because I, I want to see if you can do it. I'm going to leave it up to you. We're going to take a short break while we're doing that. You need to work out our parallel for me. In fact, total resistance, if you can get an answer. And then we'll come back to it and I'll answer it in the next section. Okay. All right. Okay. Mindset is that one thing I'm going to tell you now and then I'm going to tell you all the other stuff while we're going through the show. The SA Water Game Competition. So how you enter is that you go to www dot watergame.co.za you register to yourself and that's how you can start playing so it's all about raising awareness and getting your insight on what you think about the issues of water in south africa there are great prizes to be won guys so if you check out our facebook page you'll get all the information www.watergame.co.za register and then you can start playing the game but then a lot of you guys have been saying but Looney, there's a blank page Looney, i can't do this i can't do that if you're using the cell phone it won't work properly guys so i'd suggest that you use a computer okay use a computer to start playing the game and then i'll tell you all the other fun stuff after the break, so don't go in any. Welcome back, Mindsetters, from that break. More information just for you, Grade 12. So on Thursday at 4 to 5, we have a special broadcast coming from, from Durban, guys. So if you want to get more science and you want to learn, learn more and stuff, Durban, it's coming from Durban, but it will be broadcast and it will be from 4 to 5 on Thursday. So I hope you guys are excited for that. Get more information, you know, and just learn. Yeah, will you worry? Just say. No, no, never worry. <laughs> I'm fine. Anyway, <laughs> we had a little bit of discussion about the water game. <laughs> guys, play! <laughs> There's such cool prizes. I want to play. And I might just. But then I'll be embarrassing if I don't do well. But it's really cool, especially as an overall holistic sort of thing for you to play. I'm going to get my kids to play. 
And it's not like one of those games where it takes, you know, like you have those downloads and they go through all the social media, which you just like, okay, now you have to wait three hours while this happens and then four hours. It doesn't work like that. So it's very cool. If you don't do well, you can try it again. Can I, I like say it. something about the special broadcast as well? Okay. It's from 4 to 5 and it will be live, guys. Abram will be there. He's in Durban right now and he'll be there. So if you have any questions, you can ask Abram on our social networks and all of that stuff. Special broadcast. Yes. So, so that's where they sent him? Yes. Enough of him, eh? Yeah. yeah. We just know, yeah. We, mm, we, we're okay. tired. <laughs> yeah, the rest of our crew also went. So it was like, <laughs> fine, be like that. Anyway, so before the break and things just got out of hand, okay, we, I said to you, please try and work out your total resistance. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to work out the resistance in parallel, okay? So it was 15 and 5, okay? So what that means is we're going to go over here and we're going to try and do this so you can actually read it because we know I have issues, is we write, we're looking for our resistance in parallel. Guys, this is your equation. You must write it down, okay? That means you're now going to go 1 over 15 plus 1 over 5. Now, I'm about to show my age, grade 12s, because I know that you can press special buttons on your calculator and it will do the fraction for you. I don't know how to do that, okay? So I know, don't... No, just tell us, tell us. How old are you? No, I'm not telling you. <laughs> Maybe we'll do a prize from guessing and I'll give the... Uh, yeah, anyway, no, we're not, that's not a competition. Grade 12s, do not go and guess my age on that book. Yeah, I've got a few answers from my side about how old you are. <laughs> 21. Of course you are. Plus that. Moving on. <laughs> okay, let's do science. Point is, okay, I know that on your calculators, okay, and if you look at the calculator, there's, you've got the fraction button somewhere, and I know you can do it as a, really, if you can do it on your calculator, go ahead. I'm not going to because I need to show you something, okay? When we do this old school, the common denominator is 15, okay, so this is 1, we're going to add 3, and what happens is we get that 1 over RP equals 4 over 15. Now, do it on your calculator, you're going to get 4 over 15, we're happy you don't have to show this middle step. From here, hopefully some of you realize, well actually that's 1 over resistance in parallel, I need the total resistance. Okay, I need the resistance in parallel. This doesn't help me. So we need to invert this answer. But now what you guys do is you do this. You go, I know I've got to invert it, so it's 15 over 4. And then I stop marking. Because what you've now written is you've told me that 4 over 15 is equal to 15 over 4. No, it's not. RP is equal to 15 over 4. Another thing, and I know this is a math issue, and there's nothing wrong with what you've been taught in maths, but it becomes a problem here in science. Never leave your answer as a fraction. Okay? Never, never, never. You need to, and in fact, if you go 15 divided by 4, okay, ooh, maybe we should do it properly. 15 divided by 4. See, that gives, that's not what I want. I want 3,75. Okay? A lot of your questions are worked out with the decimal so they actually work out quite nicely for you. All right, so either you add it to something else, gives you a nicer number, gives you a nice value for current, you don't get lots of funny decimals. So sometimes they are worked out like that, okay? So please do not leave it as a fraction. Also, I now need to take this because what we've done is we've gone, well, my R parallel, this is actually 3,75. I need to add this to the 20. Okay, I need to add it to the 20 because they're actually in series with each other. Okay, once we've got 15 over 4, which now we need to add to 20, we're just making our life difficult, okay? Don't do it because now we're going to add it to the 20. Okay, so my total is R parallel plus the R that we have at the top there. So it's 3,75 plus 20 which gives me 23,75, okay, which I know just looks like the most ridiculous answer in the question, in, in the world still, but it doesn't matter. We're still on the right track. Still not done, though, because the question was calculate total um, current. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it a little bit further down, because once again, I did not leave myself enough space. Okay, so R total equals V total 
divided by I total. Now, we said that my, my resistance was 23,75. My total voltage is 60. And to get I total on its own, we're going to now um, divide, we're going to take it over to the other side. So we're going to get I total is 60 divided by 23,75. Okay, so watch, we're going to go 60, not 600. See, this thing doesn't like me. 60 divided by 23.75. Uh, there we go, and we don't want it as a fraction, and we get 2,53. Okay, remember it's got to be rounded off. So we get so many people got that right, actually. Oh, it's because they're all brilliant. Such geniuses. And you know what? That makes me very happy. It really does, and I'm really not being facetious or sarcastic about that, guys, because if there's one section in your exam that, and I know it's just me because I love the section that I really think is an easy section, it's circuits, and that's practice, practice, practice. So well done okay so we get 2,53 so that's the current and I'm gonna go back to my circuit diagram and I'm actually gonna write it in okay because you never know I might need a little bit later on and we don't want to have to keep reading the question now they say to me "Ooh, calculate the potential difference across the 15 ohm resistor the 15 ohm resistor is in parallel because it is in parallel what we need to recognize here is whatever voltage, let me do this in another color actually so we can see it because I've just, whatever voltage is over that 15 ohm resistor is the same as the voltage over the parallel. Okay, so in other words, the voltage over the 15 ohm resistor is equal to the voltage over the parallel, the potential difference over the parallel section. Okay. Notice what I've done here, grade 12s, is I've labeled this 15 ohms and parallel, okay? Because if I just go V equals to V, what are we referring to? What are we trying to get to? And if we don't write down where we're trying to get, it becomes very, diff very, very difficult, okay? To get the voltage in parallel, we go, well, I know R parallel. We worked it out. We just did it. It's 3,75. And the total current between those two branches is 2,53. It's what we just did. I can do this, so watch what happens. So V parallel, okay, is going, oh, let's not go that way, sorry, I, I lie. R parallel is V parallel over I total. Now, if you want to go V equals I times R, you're welcome to. Okay, the only reason why I don't do it is because the equation given to us is R equals V over I. And often, it's easy to make a mistake with putting V as a subject. Okay, so this is more a, let's just hedge our bets here. Let's make sure we get the marks for the things we can get. R parallel was 2,53. V parallel is what I'm looking for. My current was 20, no, it was 2, no, my, sheesh, uni. Did you not notice I made a mistake? I'm actually not looking on That's what I She's not even Sorry. listening. She's fallen asleep. <laughs> okay. That's actually 3,75. That's 2,53. Now we've got it the right way around. Okay. Oh, yes. Thank you. Because the thing is, I'm looking at the answers. That's why I wasn't looking uh, at you. So I was wondering what, what you're she's writing down. down. So I was looking. Whatever. I'm, I'm with you. I uh have. -huh. And then, when we <laughs> multiply them together, we get 9,49 volts. You must find your mistakes, you know? Mm, Young I'm, I'm checking moment. that you guys are awake. <laughs> and I'm going to stick with that answer. Okay, not so bad. But this is not the only way I can ask these questions, okay? Let's go to the next one. Also, this is from the November exam in 2008. Learners investigate the conducting ability of two metal wires, P and Q. In other words, this is really looking at Ohm's law again. Made of different materials, they connect one, one at a time in a circuit as shown. So what we have is we have our wire, we have our voltmeter, we have our ammeter. The potential difference across each wire is increased, okay, in equal increments. All that means is it's increased by the same amount. In other words, we go... 1 volt, we're looking at the potential difference, so it goes 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts. So we increase it by 1 every time, or we go 1, 
one and a half, two, two and a half, three, or by half every time that's what increments mean, and the resulting current through these wires is measured. Using the measurements, the learners obtain the following sketch graphs. Okay, so we have wire Q over here. So this is Q and this is P. We get nice straight lines. This was obviously done under ideal conditions with no internal resistance. And the first thing they say is name two variables that the learners would have controlled in each of the experiments. Very, very, very first thing you need to write down here, because this is very important, is temperature. That is a non-negotiable. Like I said to you earlier when it comes to Ohm's law, temperature has to remain constant. As soon as I change temperature, I change resistance. So now we've got to think about, and this is how you think through it, in grade 10, possibly grade 9 as well, a little bit in grade 11, not too much time is spent on it, but it's something you need to remember. We did the factors that influence resistance. They are, number one, the nature of the substance. Well, we're very definitely changing the nature of substance. We're using two different wires. Number two, temperature, which we said we've already said. Number three was the thickness of the wire, because the thicker the wire, the less the resistance. And number four was the length of the wire. The longer the wire, the more the resistance. So that means we need to keep the thickness constant. Okay? And we need to keep the length constant. Okay? In other words, if I took P and Q, I took those two wires and laid them end to end, except for the fact that they are different materials, copper, nichrome, tungsten, whatever the case may be. Everything else about them is identical. They're the same length, they're the same thickness, they're the same temperature, everything. Okay, now they only said name two variables, so it's any combination of those two. Okay, though personally I would make temperature as probably one of the most important, and then one of those two. Okay, then they say, which one? P or Q is the better conductor. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Now, when we <laughs> consider this, we've got to go, okay, better conductor would mean that we have a lower resistance. I think all of you would agree with that, okay? Lower the resistance, the better conductor. Remember that resistance is V over I. This is not a normal Ohm's law graph. Look what is on your x-axis, look what is on your y-axis. Okay? If this was just a normal Ohm's law graph, okay, and it was V over I, then the gradient of your line would give you the resistance. Okay? And then I could say, well, P is the better one because P's got a lower gradient. But this is an inverse of what we normally have. Because it's an inverse, this is being turned upside down. That means Q is actually your better conductor. Okay? Because when I write it down, okay, so Q is the better conductor. Okay? Because the gradient, okay, would be equal to the change in current over change in velocity and change, change in voltage, which is actually one over the resistance. Okay. The smaller the resistance, the greater the gradient. Okay. So, therefore, if R is small. Gradient is big. Okay. This one, this was mean. It's not probably, like I said, English wasn't my favorite subject. Probably the worst thing on the planet right now. But, under normal circumstances, the gradient is resistance. Okay? Look at the graph. It is definitely a trend at the moment to have 
the graph where your potential difference is your independent variable, okay? There's, this graph has not been drawn incorrectly, grade 12s. Please understand this. The reason why I know that is because they tell me the potential difference was changed, okay? The potential difference was changed every time we did, we did this experiment, which means the potential difference is the variable <coughs> I changed to get readings, okay? Which means then that current is my dependent variable because it is the one that depended on the voltage, okay? Please be careful. Normal Ohm's law graph is the other way around, is, is current versus potential difference. It is definitely a trend to start working it this way around because actually it's sometimes a lot easier in the lab to change the voltage and to adjust that than to adjust the current to certain values, okay? So please, please be careful. You are going to get questions like this in your exam, grade 12s. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, where, you, where you're expected to explain your answers, okay? Now, before we jump into question three, which I'm not sure we're going to have time to finish, we're going to take a short break, and then we're going to do the challenge question quickly. The challenge question. <laughs> do we have answers to the challenge question? I'll check for you. Okay, during the break, we'll check. Yes. Okay. But now, can mm. I... Oh, yeah, okay. go ahead. All right. I'm done. Mindset is, as you know, during winter school, we gave away an Intel-sponsored device, and that was the T100 Asus tablet, and it was given away to Refuelo Sobogo. So now Intel have given us this great, cool platform with cool content to learn and all that stuff and mindset content is also included in on that website so all you need to do to have to get a hold of that content wow guys wow <laughs> Okay, all you need to do to get a hold of that content and to be part of that cool experience is go to intel.com forward slash explore and learn. And it's all one word, all everything is spelled correctly. So it's intel.com forward slash explore and learn and you can have access to that cool and awesome content to help you learn. Let's take a very quick break. I need some water so that I can get my words and stuff correct. And I'll see you straight after the break. Welcome back, welcome back. I have so much fun in the studio though. Are you good, Tracy? I'm good. You know, if Looney <laughs> disappears or you hear funny things coming across when she's on TV or the, her face distorts, don't worry about it. It's not your TV. It's our producer. It's just, yeah, today. real life stuff. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame her at all because Looney said she said I was 57. <laughs> Which I'm not. If, you if said I, you were 18. We believe you, Tracy. <gasps> Otherwise, I've aged really well. What can I say? <laughs> anyway, so to the challenge question. Yes. Now, before the break, Muni finally found some answers. It looked like nobody had tried to answer the question, which caused, <gasps> would drive me a bit mad. No, but we've got, we've got some coming through. So, so let's hear some of the numbers that came through. Okay. Mashabane says 0.56. Tidilizi says 0.5. Dumo says 0 0.5, Siabonga says 1.5, Tabiso says 2, Boikuto says 0 0.5 and 0 0.675. Gave two answers. Yes. Okay. Masindi says 0 0.5, Londa says 2, Wiseman says 2.08, Temba says 0 0.5, and Mugamele says 0 0.5. The majority is saying 0, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. Perfect. Okay, because now what I'm going to show you, sh shows, shows you, I've caught whatever yeah, she had. It's, it's that thing. Um, <laughs> what I'm going to show you is actually this really wasn't so bad. The hint in this question is whether these are open or closed, you get the same reading. Okay, so I'm going to do this question going, well, let's pretend the switches are open. So I'm going to take my pen and I'm going to go, well, let's see what happens when the current goes around, okay? So current goes here, we go, okay, it comes here. Now, switch S2 is open. Current can't jump over an open space, so I'm gonna ignore it. Goes and it goes and it comes through the ammeter, so it gets all the current, goes through the six. We now get to this point and we go, well, once again, 
current can't jump over an open switch so we ignore the s1 which means it's gonna go down here and it's gonna go down here and it's gonna go down here okay the reason why i don't want to do it with both switches closed is because i don't know the value of r okay i don't know the value of r and knowing the value of r is actually really important also if switch s1 is closed no current will go through the one ohm resistor why would it go through the one ohm resistor when it can go through a place with no resistance it's just not going to happen okay this is why doing things with colored pens and stuff makes your life so much easier because now what it means is the two the one and the six are all in series with each other so when it comes to calculating the reading first thing i'm going to do is find my total resistance which is r1 plus r2 plus r3 so it's one plus two and it was six that gives me nine so the first step in this is that i know my total resistance is nine okay our total is v total time divided by i total my v total was four and a half it was given to me Okay, and so I total is four and a half divided by nine, which is naught comma five amps. Really not so bad, hey? Okay, why would, it, why would they have told you right at the beginning that it doesn't matter if they're open and closed? Because actually, what we could do now is say to you, close both switches and calculate R. Why? Because I know that this is 0.5 amps. Okay, so by closing the switches, I know it's still 0.5 amps. That one disappears, and I would need to work out what R is. Okay, so it actually isn't as bad as it looks. It really, really isn't. Yeah, and I know none of you believe me, but just go with it. Okay, so that means that we can hit question three now. Yay. I like question three. <laughs> I know you guys don't, but that's besides the point. Okay. And I'm pretty sure some of you are going, hang on, wait, Josie. Seriously? Did you leave the nasty one for last? Yes. Because I can. Sorry. I won't do that. Okay. Mm, yeah. Mm. Stop it. No, I'm not going to say anything. It's fine. So I love circuits. <laughs> okay. Six volts is your EMF. Okay. We are assuming no internal resistance this week. We'll do internal resistance next week. Okay, so that makes life easier. Remember, before I even do the question, and I'll do it with, with the normal pen instead of the things, instead of the highlighter, so you can see, we need to work out what's happening here, okay? So current starts, gets to this point. Current's gonna <coughs> split up, it's a three and a four. I'm going to run out of pink colors, so it's a three and a four, all comes back together, okay, all comes back together. Now, yes, it does become a bit of a problem when you run out of colors. Actually, I'm fine for colors. What am I saying? These are different, and what that means for me is that actually I have two parallel sections that are in series with each other, okay? So to find the total resistance, I first need to work out the one in parallel plus the other in parallel. And then I'm going to add the two together. Okay, so I'm going to do the, one, the first R parallel. So we'll call that RP1, which is R1 plus R2. And that makes it 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. And I am going to do this old school because that makes it easier for me. Lowest common denominator is 12, so we've got 4 plus 3 at the top, 7 over 12. So my first resistance in parallel is 12 over 7. And just to save a little bit of time, I actually have worked these out already because it's going to make life easier, and that gives me <coughs> 1,71 ohms, okay? I'm now going to do the same for the other one, for the one that was in 3, okay? second one and I just use R1 plus R2 plus R3 because that's how the equation is set out on my information sheet and this one is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 
plus 1 over 6. Okay, lowest common denominator is 6 this time. So this is 3, 2, and 1. Oh, look, at 6 over 6. We like this one because 6 over 6 turned upside down is still 6 over 6. So R parallel for number 2 is 1 ohm. Now, remember I said to you that when you have resistors in, in parallel, the total is always lower than the smallest resistor. 1 is definitely smaller than 2. 1 comma 7, 1 is definitely smaller than 3. Okay? Always. We're not done yet, though, because we wanted the total resistance in the circuit. That means my res resistance in total is my first parallel section plus my second parallel section. 2,71 ohms. Okay? That's the first part. Now, wrong way. Wrong way. Seriously? Really? This thing doesn't like me. Stop it. <laughs> it is very important to, t to speak to your tech. Okay? If anyone ever asks. I'm a science teacher. Of course I'm right. Okay. <laughs> so, now they say calculate the ammeter reading. Guys, you worked out that my total resistance was 2,71 ohms, okay? This ammeter, if you look at the diagram where I did all the colors, had the yellow, which was the same all the way around, which means this ammeter is looking at total current. Total voltage... No, it's fine, it's fine. Because <laughs> I'm in a hurry now. ...is 6 volts. Okay, nice and simple, nice and simple. R total is V total divided by I total. So this is 2,71. This is 40, no, is 6, wasn't it? Yep, 6. I was about to say 45, who knows? Okay, so that means I'm going to go 6 divided by 2,1. And we get um, 2, 21. That doesn't look right. So 6 divided by 2.71 is 2, 21. Look at that. Okay, 2, 21 amps. We're all happy with that so far. Okay? Now, now we get to the fun question. Nat says... Calculate the voltmeter reading. Uh -huh. So, the voltmeter sits here and here. Guys, don't take the voltmeter as being over the cells. Okay? Either the voltmeter is measuring this side of the circuit or it's measuring this side of the circuit. Okay? We don't want to use the side I've done in blue because that includes the cells. That's just going to make life difficult. Don't do it. So what this voltmeter is actually reading is the voltage over that parallel section. Okay, that's what made this question difficult, is what is that voltmeter actually reading? The voltage over that parallel section, okay? So remember that our parallel... And that was the second parallel that we did, okay, is going to be V. Well, we're just going to call it V, not V parallel, because they called it V. Divided by I total, okay. So that I, R parallel, we worked out two sections ago to be, what was it? 1, 7, 1. Correct? Uh, yeah, good, I'm glad you're all screaming in my head. Or not, 1, 71. <laughs> Voltage is what I'm looking for. This was 2, 21. Okay, so my voltage, and my notes are actually wrong, I've just realized, is 1.71 times 2.21, and we get 3,78. Okay? 3,78. We're all happy with that. All right, good. Now they say to you, Calculate the current in the 2 ohm resistor. It's also how I know that I worked out the right voltage. Because this is the one I've just worked out. And we said this was 
three, sorry, three comma, let's just see, seven, eight. Wrong way again. Okay, this is three comma seven, eight. Why was that important? Because in parallel, voltage stays the same. So the voltage over the 2 ohm, the 3 ohm, and the 6 ohm are all the same. Current's not going to be the same. And in fact, the current in the 2 ohm is going to be smaller. Sorry, it's going to be bigger than in all the rest. It's going to take a big chunk of that 2,71. Okay. Also, if you weren't sure in the question before which section to use for your voltage, look at the next question. Because often, you're going to carry down your answers, okay? Now, that means if, say, you got the current wrong in 3.1, so in 3.2, but use it correctly in 3.3, then carry that down, okay? You don't lose all your marks for that. So we want the current in the 2 ohm. So we are looking at the resistance of the 2 ohm. It has the voltage of I, sorry, of V, and I want the current in that 2 ohm resistor. So this becomes 2, this is 3,78, we want I in that 2 ohm resistor, so I becomes 3,78 divided by 2, okay, and that gives me 1,89, okay. My total current was 2,7, what was it? No, 2,21. If I get an answer bigger than 2,21, I made a mistake, okay? Now, I know that's quite close, but that's because that 6 ohm resistor is going to get three times less than the 2 ohm, and the 3 ohm is going to get one and a half times less, okay? Because of the ratio the, of the resistors. So don't stress about it. As long as that value wasn't bigger than your total, we're okay. Okay. Now, Looney, mm -hmm. before I wrap up, you have like 30 seconds if there's questions. 30 seconds. Not even. Look at that. <laughs> Are there questions? Yes. Can, can current pa pass through an open switch? I just no. forgot the name. No. No. Okay. That's, that was how we answered the, the challenge question. Cannot go through an open switch. If the switch is open, current cannot flow. Because they can't jump over. They can't remember a lazy. They can't jump over gaps. That was Zime. Yes. And then from Mukunyelezi, what causes the main switch to fall when there is damage on some electrical wire? Because it's a safety precaution. So you're talking about fuses. Yes. And your trip switches at home will, will trip because the current gets too high. Okay, so it's, t and when the current gets too high, your fuse breaks. One more. What yes. is the difference between V-load and EMF and how ca to calculate V-load? We're going to do V-load next week, okay? okay? EMF is your total including internal resistance. Voltage of the load is the external circuit, okay? So we're going to deal with that next week. We don't often call it V-load, but there's nothing wrong with that. We're going to deal with that next week, though. Okay, right. so I'm done. Sorry, guys, I get like two seconds to say goodbye. Goodbye, I will see you next week. Thank you so much, Tracy, for the lesson. Okay. My sisters, thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if we don't get through your questions, our help desk are there for a reason. Send your questions to there. All the information is on our Facebook page. Thank you so much for tuning in. We love you very much, and we wish you all the best for everything and all your studies. But from us, until next week, it's a goodbye. Bye, guys.